Welcome! Today we're going to see the Marshall Learner Condition, which is a very useful tool in international economics. Let's uh, start with this simple definition, which says that when a currency depreciates, the exports become cheaper and the imports become dearer. We're going to see this with an example. Suppose that we have two countries, the European Union and Australia, and there's a winery in France that is selling a bottle of wine to Australia. This bottle of wine is priced at 100 euros. If the exchange rate is equal to 1 Australian dollar per euro, this means that Australian customers are going to have to pay exactly 100 dollars to get this bottle of wine from France. Now let's assume that the exchange rate of the euro depreciates and that for each Australian dollar you get 2 euros. Well, this means that exactly the same bottle that was priced at 100 euros now costs 50 dollars for Australian customers. When the currency depreciates, the wine exports from France to Australia are becoming cheaper for Australian uh, consumers. Let's look at the case of the imports. Suppose that Australia is selling a jar of Bijimai to the European Union. And we go back to our original exchange rate of one Australian dollar per euro. If this jar was priced at two dollars, this means that the European customers will have to pay exactly two euros. However, if the exchange rate depreciated and for each Australian dollar you got two euros, this means that the same Bijimai that was priced at two dollars now will cost four euros for the European customers. When the currency depreciates, the imports into the European Union will become more expensive for European customers. When a currency appreciates, the opposite will happen. And currencies always move in unison, one against the other, which means that as the euro is depreciating, the same thing is happening, the opposite is happening for the Australian dollar, it is appreciating. We have an acronym in Britain called SPICED, which summarizes a little bit these effects. SPICED stands for Strong Pound Imports Cheaper, Exports Dearer. When the pound appreciates, imports become cheaper and exports become more expensive. Now, the opposite happens. When the, when the pound depreciates, that means that the imports become more expensive and the exports become cheaper. This is an acronym that helps us to remember these effects in the exams when we are under pressure. Now, exports and imports are measured in value. We don't care about how many bottles of wine are sent from the European Union to Australia. We care how much they Australians have, Australia had to pay for those bottles. We measure this as a multiplication of the price of the exports times the quantity of the exports. That's what gives us the value of exports. And the same thing goes for the imports. We only care about the value of imports, which is equal to the price of the imports and the quantity of the imports. Now suppose that we are in the short run. And as we've seen, if the euro depreciates, that means that the exports from the European Union are becoming cheaper and the imports into the European Union are becoming more expensive. We assume, in the Marshall Learn condition, we assume that in the short run, the PED of both exports and imports are relatively inelastic. Now, this has a lot of effects in terms of the value that we are measuring. Suppose that our exports are falling by this much. If our exports are relatively inelastic and their price is falling, that means that the quantity exported will increase. But by how much depends on this elasticity. Since it's inelastic, the increase in the quantity of exports will be smaller than the decrease in the price of the exports, which means that the value of exports will fall. In the case of the imports, since the price of the imports is increasing, but we're selling relative, we're buying relatively inelastic goods, this means that the quantity of imports, yes, it will decrease, but by very little, and therefore the value of the imports will increase. Since we value, uh, measure the value of the uh, balance of payments current account 
as the exports minus the imports, this means that the net exports will be falling in the case that we depreciate and we have PED and of exports and imports is uh, inelastic. We assume that in the long run, however, both the PED of the exports and the imports become relatively elastic. And if we follow the same logic, that means that if exports fall by this much and they are relatively elastic, the quantity of exports will increase by more than this. And therefore, the value of the exports now will increase. As for the imports, for this increase in the price of the imports, the quantity of the imports will fall by a lot and therefore the value of the imports will fall. In the long run, when PED and of exports and imports are relatively elastic, this means that our net exports will increase. The balance of payments current account will improve. What the Martian alert condition uh, says the following. We will only improve our net exports if the addition of the PED of the exports and imports is greater than 1. And as we've seen, we assume that in the short run that is not the case. We assume that this only happens in the long run. We will see later why we assume this. We can represent this notion with the J-curve diagram. Suppose that there is this country that is having a trade deficit. The balance of payments current account is negative. And it decides to depreciate the currency because the net exports should increase if we depreciate the currency. As we've seen, however, in the short run, this will lead to a worsening of the current account. And therefore, in the short run, our trade deficit will increase. It's only little by little as we start moving into the long run and our PED of exports and imports starts becoming relatively elastic that our trade deficit starts improving. Hence, this shape of this curve that represents the improvement in the net exports over time. We can also look at the inverted J curve, which is the opposite. If what happens if our currency appreciates? If our currency appreciates, that means that at the beginning, our net exports will increase, and it's over time that our net exports will start falling. Now, how do we use this Marshall Learner condition in the exams? It's actually a very, very useful evaluative technique for any case that deals with exchange rates. One of the main reasons on how we use this for evaluation is that we are assuming that uh, exports and imports are inelastic in the short run and elastic in the long run. For example, um, this is because companies sign contracts to import and export. An Australian company, for instance, could have, uh, have a contract to import 100 bottles of red wine from France over the period of six months. It's only afterwards that these contracts get renegotiated that they are renegotiated with better conditions depending on the new market conditions. Uh, however, and this is the key, not all goods will become elastic in the long run. And this is because there are some goods that are intrinsically relatively inelastic. For example, oil or gas or other raw materials. It doesn't matter very much whether we're in the short or the long run, the uh, elasticity of oil is always going to be very low. And therefore, uh, depreciation of a currency in a country that mostly just exports raw materials is probably not going to improve the current account balance payments current account in the future. Therefore, one way that you can be using this in the exams um, is by applying. You need to apply this uh, tool to the case study. If the case study in paper 2 is discussing a country that is mostly exporting raw materials, therefore you will have to use the, um, the Marshall alert condition accordingly to say that a depreciation of the currency is not going to improve the balance of payments current account neither in the short run nor in the long run. However, if we're talking about countries that sell, for example, services that do become elastic in the long run, 
then it does make sense to depreciate the currency in order to improve the balance of payments current account. And this is all. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and or subscribe.